the best choice here is mesotrexate neurotoxicity. Let's look at some of the features that make sure this be the best answer here. Hopefully you notice right away on DWI on ADC, there's a relatively faint signal on DWI is bright. Clearly there's reduced diffusivity, dark on ADC. Notice that the involvement typically is involving the central internal valley, the deep white matter with sparing of the cortex. So that makes this a arterial infarction unusual because remember infarction typically wedge shape involving the cortex rather than just involvement of the white matter. Sometimes you may not see flare signal abnormality in the beginning. Also, in the beginning, you do not see enhancement. Later on, you may see variable enhancement. So this pattern is important to recognize if the history fit. In this case, patient has ALL leukemia undergoing treatment. The patient does receive mesotrexate as part of the treatment. And this is important because the early sign you may see is diffusion abnormality or restrict diffusion involving the classic location of central and central valley, and you may not see flare signal. The timeline typically is anywhere between two days to 14 days, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes much later. And also, the symptom or finding can occur either unilaterally or bilaterally. In this case, you have a unilateral involvement. Often, I see bilateral involvement. And the symptoms also can be wax and wean. Uh, this can get better, get worse, and can present uh, one side gets worse, one side gets better, et cetera, et cetera. Again, history obviously is important. Patient, in this case, patient is receiving mesotrexate treatment, especially intrathecal mesotrexate. Now let's look at some other choices that do not work as well. For example, choice A, arterial infarction. Again, for that, it's strange that you don't have involvement of the cortex. Um, you have a strict involvement of restrict diffusion involving the white matter, central and central valley. So that would be strange for arterial infarction. For venous infarction, again, this doesn't follow that classic location or territory of venous infarction. In other words, they do not really uh, occur adjacent to a venous sinuses such as uh, toward the vertex uh, along the superior sagittal sinus or around the temporal lobe or the inferior parietal lobe where the transverse sinus typically drain to. And a thing of note for venous infarction versus arterial infarction on the board exam, remember venous infarction tend to present with parenchymal hemorrhage, much more common than arterial infarction with hemorrhagic transformation. For CNS leukemia infiltrate, um, you are looking for enhancement or enhancing lesion. They could be multifocal or they can present like choroma where they can be a single dominant mass lesion. This is an example of a patient, 20-year-old with ALL, uh, which present with CNS leukemia infiltrate. Notice that there are multiple signal abnormality on flare. The location is random and unpredictable, and they often accompanied by enhancing lesion, as you can see in these cases, post-contrast T1. So it would be strange for our case not to show an enhancement to be a CNS a leukemia infiltrate or presented with chroma where you have a solid enhancing mass lesion. For choice E, drug induced press. Press is remember is the posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. Typically, it occurs in patients with hypertensive emergency or hypertensive encephalopathy or with patients with eclampsia, preeclampsia. One of the potential causes for PRESS, though, is patient undergoing chemotherapy or undergoing immunosuppressive medication. Even though PRESS can involve the anterior territory, but typically they are more posteriorly predominant, especially on board exam, if they show you the classic case, they should show you the case that has posterior distribution. They should show you the case that do not have restricted diffusion. Instead, it has T2 shine through. Also, PRESS typically has a cortical and subcortical involvement. This would be a classic example on board exam for press on the flare signal of penalty involving the cortex as well as the subcortical white matter, posterior distribution rather than anterior. On diffusion with the sequence, there's no restricted diffusion. So that's a classic example of press. So overall, this is best for methotrexate neurotoxicity, particularly intrathecal methotrexate administration. The buzzword on board exam is that you have restricted diffusion involving the central central valley. Uh, 
Obviously, history is important. In this case, patient had ALL leukemia and undergoing chemotherapy. So next time you see this finding with relevant history, think of methotrexate neurotoxicity. That's all for this brain case number 13. Thanks for your attention and good luck on your board exam.